Hello and welcome to the short board on Parak Shas Mishpatim dedicated to Ilu Nishmas Avi Mori Naftali Ben Yitzhak Isaac. I thought with all the laws between man and his friend in Parshas Mishpatim that in Bava Kama I'd surely find a lot of choices of Divrei Torah to focus on. However, according to the Art Scroll Index in the Gemara, I only found one Pasuk that fit in the Dapim of this week's Parsha of Sadi Dalad to Kuf, um, this week's Shavua. And it's on Sadi Dalad Amad Beis, where we quote Perich of Beis, Pasuk of Zayim, Elohim lo sekalel v'nasi ba'amcha lo sa'or. So, even though some say that Elohim or is, is referring here specifically to Hashem, most say that it's, it's uh, talking about uh, Dayanim, the judges, that you should not curse them, and also that a prince amongst your nation, you shall not curse. So the Briska Rav, Rabbi Yitzchak Zev Salavechik, 18, um, 1886 to 1959, so he's Medayik, he's careful on the language, and he says, why does it say Ba'amcha by the prince only and doesn't say Ba'amcha by the judges? So he explained that Chazal teaches us that when it comes to Ba'amcha, it's teaching us that it only applies to the prince who's acting Ba'amcha, acting as part of the nation, fulfilling Hashem's will. However, if a person is a prince and he's not fulfilling Hashem's will, then you actually are not restricted from cursing him. So why is there a difference between the prince and the judge? So the Briscoe Rav explains that because by a monarchy, that's something get that goes by inheritance from father to son. And in, not every generation is going to be a righteous king. Sometimes the king will be a Russian. In that case, he's not Ba'amcha. If he's not acting properly, then you are allowed to curse that king. However, when it comes to a judge, a judge is appointed based on his, his spiritual uh, accomplishments and his merits and his knowledge and so, therefore, it's really unlikely that you're going to find a Russia that's not Ba'amcha, because by definition, that's why he was chosen. And so, for a judge, you don't have to say Ba'amcha, it's a given, and by Nasi, though, you have to be careful, make sure he's part of the nation, otherwise the rule does not apply. Rav Shamshin or Fall Hirsch, 1808 to 1888, so they only had a two-year overlap, is all so careful about the words of this Pasuk, and it, was, it was says, Elohim lo sekalel, one language of cursing, v'nasi ba'amcha lo sa'or, another language of cursing. So Rav Hirsch explains the difference. By kuf lamed lamed, that root, halal, it's the opposite of kaved, meaning light, opposite of heavy, opposite of honor. And this is referring to the influence that this person's position has, something that he occupies. And when he's mekalel him, He's trying to make light of him. He's trying to reduce this person's weight, literally, or else his, his honor in his position. However, uh, or, tar is from Aleph Reish Reish, which is related to Ayin Reish Reish, which means to be uh, adverse, to wish adversity, unfruitful, to dry up, and harar, to consume by fire. So here we're talking about a wish of adversity and ruin to the person, not the position. A judge it's not so much the person as the position that the person is probably attacking that that stands in his way, that that, that authority. However, and therefore he wants the person, then he wants that position to be reduced. However, when it comes to a, a, a nasi, then it's the uh, superiority of the person's wealth and his personal dignity that's the thorn in one side. Therefore, the curse is directed for the judge as language of klala, of making it light versus the position, and the nasi is by ma'ara, the cursed one, based on the person himself. In one case, it's it's, it's incited by defiance, and the other by envy. So thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful Shabbos.